So today I'm going to get you up and running with CMU emulator and this is for Windows PC. So what is CMU? It's a very awesome Nintendo Wii emulator and it doesn't necessarily mean that we need thousands of pounds worth of hardware to upscale Wii U games to between 2K and 4K. So I'm going to be covering all the video settings in this video, how to map out your controller and switch between the gamepad mode and the TV mode. I'm going to be showing you how to install your games and Pretty much everything is in this setup guide, so if you want some truly awesome looking games, then check this one out. Okay then, so before I start today's setup guide, make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like if you liked today's video, it really helps my channel a lot, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I release it. So I've covered Wii U in the past on Retrobat and a couple of other front end systems, but today we're looking at it as a standalone emulator and it's surprisingly pretty simple to set up. So what we're going to do is, if we head over to the CMU website, as it says, we are currently on 2.0 as a record in this video. If we just scroll down, it's going to tell you which graphic card it supports. So NVIDIA GPUs and AMD GPUs, as well as Intel GPUs, limited support, obviously. So if we just scroll down a little bit further, we got two downloads. So the one we're going to get is the recommended one, which is the latest experimental version. If you just left click on this, this is going to take you over to a GitHub. So what we're going to do is download the top one just here, CMU 2.0 59 experimental. Just left click on that one and we're going to download the version for Windows and this is the Windows 64.zip. So we've now downloaded that and if we go back to the CMU website, at the top under compatibility, it will tell you everything that CMU can emulate. So we take a look at the scale at the top, we got perfect, playable, and we match this up with the perfect in blue just here, which is 12% in playable, which is 40%. Now most of your mainstream games, AAA titles if you will, pretty much runs fine on this in up to 2k to 4k resolution without a problem providing you've got a decent computer having said that a lower end computer would easily support some of these games too so this is your compatibility list and most of your major titles are there so once you've downloaded CMU, you're going to get yourself a .zip folder if you just double left click into that and drag out the CMU folder and we can now delete that zip folder we no longer need that one so let's go into the CMU folder and here we go. So you've got three folders inside plus the CMU.exe which is the executable file. So just double left click on this one and Windows protected your PC. Should you get this little window come up just go to more info and run anyway as a fine profile. So as a part of the installation process in setting up paths, the first thing we need to do is create a game path. So I'm going to be using Star Fox Zero. So the folder structure inside of Star Fox Zero, we got code, content, and meta. If we go inside of code, we got Star Fox Zero RPX, and that's our main launcher file. So yes, CMU supports this file extension just fine. So what we need to do is create a game path and we need to link up CMU with this. So inside of my CMU folder, I'm going to just right click inside new folder and I'm going to create a folder called games. And I'm going to drag my .rpx Star Fox Zero game inside of there. Now let's go back to the getting started window. So game path, what we're going to do now is go to browse, desktop and in my CMU folder we can now highlight games just left click once and select folder and whilst we're here we got the option to download graphics packs which obviously improves the games such as visual improvements that type of thing so if you just left click on download community graphics packs just let this extract and we've now got the option to view the downloaded graphics pack so if we press yes this is all of the graphics packs that this has installed for us so if we scroll down we got Star Fox Zero which is the game I'm using graphics and for this we got a higher resolution mod 
So active present, by default, this game is going to be running at 720p. If we pop this down, as we can see, 3840 by 2160 is 4K. And you can rise from this, you can actually go higher. If you've got potato of a computer, don't even go up to 4K. Just be very modest and go up to something like 2K or 1080p. And close out. And now we're going to go to next. Now, your next part of this is going to tell you which buttons on your keyboard is going to do what. So we've got control, which is going to show the Wii U's game screen. Uh, control and tab, toggle pad screen, alt and enter, toggle full screen, and escape, leave full screen. So what we're going to do next then is configure the input, the controller then. So if we left click on configure input, what we're going to do first of all is create a profile name. And beneath that we got emulator controller. So for this particular game, I'm going to be using a Wii U gamepad controller underneath this and select API. Now it's likely that your controller is going to connect with either SDL or X input or even direct input. I'm going to take my chance and try SDL. And under controller, we can now see my controller I'm going to be using, which is Google Stadia controller. And just press add. And what we're going to do next is actually map out the buttons on our actual controller that we've got on our physical controller we're going to be using. So it's just a simple case of left clicking twice on each one of these buttons and then corresponding it with your controller that you're going to be using. Now, for some Wii U games, uh, such as the Super Mario 3D World game, uh, some of those games it's going to require you to blow into the microphone, which is built into the handheld component of the Wii U. So we can actually map this out as well. So I'm going to be using a button on my controller to map out the blow. And once you finish mapping everything out, we've also got a settings tab just here where we can configure and fine tune the axis on our analog sticks if you like. Seeming I've got this set up, I'm going to just go to save now, and as we can see, profile saved. And we can close this down. Now going back to the getting started screen, I'm going to start games with full screen. Automatically check for updates and ask for the CMU emulator. And it's optional, but we can do this whilst we're inside of the gameplay. So open separate pad screen, that's entirely up to you. I'm actually going to check this one for now and press close. And as we can see, we have now got the GUI, which is a graphical user interface of CMU. So it's pretty nice, not too bad compared to some emulators. And we've also got the gamepad view. So when we boot up the game, we're also going to see what's actually on the screen of the gamepad. So to play this, I'm going to double left click. And here we go. So we got the main screen just here, which is representing the TV screen. And of course, the gamepad screen just here. And just be aware, just like PlayStation 3 games, this also works with shaders.
So as we can see there, the game's working perfectly and the swap between the screen mode you would have on the Wii U pad and the actual TV mode, I'm literally just pressing one of my buttons to swap between places there. So the game is showing its age now, but it still looks really good. What we're going to do is adjust this and make this look as good as possible. If we right click on the game, edit graphics packs, First of all, I'm going to enable that resolution that we downloaded during the installation process. And currently, as we know, this is running at 720p, tut tut Nintendo. And we're going to put this one onto 2K for now. And I'm going to just close out of this. So to change the video settings, if we go to options at the top and just scroll down to where it says general settings, under graphics, if any of your games fail to boot, just remember that this supports OpenGL and Vulkan. So if you've got a NVIDIA graphics card, then it's likely going to be working from OpenGL. Having said that, I do have a NVIDIA graphics card and it's working just fine with Vulkan. So if you notice through the gameplay, there's a lot of screen tear going on. That's because VSync by default is turned off. If we turn this to, say, triple buffering, and under async shader compile we can enable this to make things look a little bit better but it also warns us that it can make other parts of the game not render correctly so next up we've got upscale filter and by cubic is what is currently on i'm going to put this to nearest neighbor under full screen scaling i'm going to keep this to keep aspect ratio so i'm going to close out of here and boot up the game again As we can see, that looked totally stunning. So what we're going to do is actually bump this up all the way this time. So we're going to go back into that patch that we downloaded. So to enter this, we need to right click on the game, edit graphics pack, select resolution, and I'm going to bump this one all the way up to 4K this time. So it's not going to surprise me at all if this game lags, but we're going to test this.
you see just there, by boosting that up to 4K resolution, for me at least, we did have a little bit of lag, but I'm going to partly put that down to the shaders building, like I was talking about uh, as I started this video. So shaders, it's compiling all the images and all the graphics and all the data from the games, and it's putting it into a folder. So it's literally a one-time process. And you know, some people will say, why do you want to play Wii U games nowadays? My answer is very simple. We don't have Star Fox yet on the Switch. We don't have Devil Spirit on the Switch yet. And we don't have the Kirby Magic Paintbrush game, or that's called. But such great games. And it's a shame that Nintendo hasn't put these on Switch yet. And I also believe that Yoshi's Woolly World hasn't been added to Switch. So there's still reasons to play the Wii U, as well as the original Splatoon game, which to my knowledge also isn't on the Switch yet. So, like I say, if you've got a good enough computer, you can make Wii U games look really good. As we can see from the footage, I have managed to do this up to 4K. Bear in mind, I'm recording this at the same time. So, if I wasn't recording this, it's quite likely it wouldn't lag at all. So, anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss up and coming retro emulation content. Also, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.